before I go to Phil Wegman of Real Clear Politics, love having Phil on as well. Uh, it looks like the seventh time, not the charm for Kevin McCarthy, at least five votes now, not form seven, not form right now. Now, again, the most no votes he's gotten, uh, I, by no, no to him, we, we don't want you, Kevin, uh, was 20. So maybe he's hoping that given some concessions late last night, meeting with Republicans, uh, that he could whittle that down a bit and the trend would be his friend. But at the rate we're going, um, that might be hard, too. But, uh, you know, that we're, we're in a position now where to decide this, we're going to have to go to at least an eighth vote. Phil Wegman, what do, what do you think of all this? I think we're going to find out whether or not the concessions from McCarthy are going to be enough to at least pique the interest of some of these Freedom Caucus members. He knows, though, and this was a point that was made by uh, Brett Baer repeatedly yesterday, that he's running out of arrows. There's only so many concessions that he can give to these conservatives to get their votes and get them on board. Uh, because on the flip side, if he says yes to motion to vacate, if he says yes to allowing more of these conservatives on the Rules Committee, so on and so forth, uh, it is going to make it more difficult for him to wrestle the House when he needs to get the GOP caucus on the same page. Um, it's certainly possible that all of the steps that he's taking to pick up the gavel could, in the end, make him a pretty anemic speaker. You know, you do have to wonder, too. I had Ralph Norman on the uh, South Carolina Republican who was involved in those meetings. To your, to your point, Phil, wasn't impressed that he still would be a no vote on him, would still support uh, Byron Donald. So uh, I'm just wondering, um, given the fact that even moderates were getting concerned about the concessions that McCarthy was making, uh, forget about life as speaker trying to deal with that. He might never get to speak or because of the way he's dealing with this. Yeah, and I, I think that what we're seeing right now is you really do have a Republican Party that's in the wilderness, but there's no Moses to guide them <laughs> out, right? You're not going to have Donald Trump step in, Jim Jordan, any of these more conservative populist folks bring the party together because you have the moderates who are suspicious of their right flank and vice versa. Um, and I think that if we look at this through a soda straw and we only see what's happening currently, we, we miss the, the forest for the trees. The fight that Kevin McCarthy McCarthy is having right now is a continuation of the GOP civil war, more or less, that um, Boehner and Paul Ryan had with many of these same conservatives. These guys are, are frustrated and they're concerned. The reason why they're, they're fighting McCarthy now is they look over to the Senate chamber, they see minority leader Mitch McConnell shaking hands with President Biden, celebrating his infrastructure package at a photo op in Kentucky uh, yesterday, and these conservatives are saying to themselves, well, we need to fight now. We need to put a marker down now so that if he does pick up the gavel, uh, McCarthy is not going to so easily acquiesce to everything that the Biden administration wants. You know, Phil, I'm wondering if it's something even simpler than all this. They just don't like Kevin McCarthy. I've heard <laughs> more, from more than a few who yeah. bristled at the notion that he was using the Speaker's office while he was waiting this out, found that a little bit arrogant. Um, they, they, they said early on in talks, and this is going back a week or two, um, he was very dismissive of their concerns, would snap at them and be very condescending towards them. And that was the impression of a few, I, I, mm -hmm. I want to stress. But these are the same few who, to a man and woman, are still locked in the same 20 that we had almost from the outset here. So I, I don't, to turn on that old phrase, it's not business, it's personal. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if we're missing that. Well, I think that perhaps some of these principal disagreements are just further curdling the bad blood that does exist currently. I mean, we saw McCarthy and what was a real flex move into the House Speaker's office before he even had the votes. Right. And I think that, yes, he has done a lot to shore up his right flank. He uh, stood with conservatives and complained about the omnibus. He has pushed for more um, to happen on the southern border. Uh, the, the guy is, is much more aligned uh, with with, you know, populist conservatives than maybe Ryan or Boehner was. He's certainly an ally of the, the former president. Uh, but yeah, uh, maybe it does come down to uh, they don't feel like um, he is in their corner. And, and frankly, um, you know, if you listen to the argument from Representative Jim Jordan, uh, who essentially said, you know, McCarthy isn't an ideologue. He's kind of flexible, and that's the best kind of speaker to have because he can be flexible in the conservative direction. Um, you know, maybe some of these House conservatives are hearing that and saying, no, not at all. And, uh, you know, the, 
the the snapping and the the anger in committee uh, hearings behind closed doors, um, maybe that just further turns them off. Well, something's turning them off. To your point, Phil. Always good seeing you, my friend. Hope the new year is going well for you. Not going well for Kevin McCarthy for the time being. For the seventh time, he has failed in his pursuit to become leader of 